In any given year, our staff is something around 30 different people, and that's comprised of both undergraduate researchers, master's students, PhD, staff and faculty here at the University of Miami. You know, a shark research lab has some unique space requirements. Back in the day, I used to think of scientists as maybe only working in a clinical setting, but for us, it's quite different. So we use both this shared common space that I'm talking to you in today, but we also have like a gear shed where we keep all of our field supplies and equipment. And then we have other areas too for holding meetings and things like that. To be perfectly honest, we could use more space because we are a growing team. In the last couple years, I think that the research projects have really blossomed. There's so many different areas that we're studying. And in many ways, the field protocols have grown kind of beyond what a typical team could do. When I first joined the lab, we would go out on shark tagging trips with maybe five people altogether. And we were probably doing the work of seven people. But as lab protocols expanded, our research projects expanded, it required us to bring more crew on so that we could collect that data. SRC has a really wide variety of research projects that span a number of different disciplines within marine biology and ecology. We have research that looks at the movement of sharks within Biscayne Bay. We have research that looks at the movement of sharks in other areas of the world, like the Bahamas and South Africa. We also do a lot of blood work. You can learn a lot from the blood. Some of that goes to reproductive studies, trying to tell if the sharks are reproducing and relating that reproduction to other things you might be noticing. Also looking at the nutritional health of sharks. And there's certain molecules we can measure in the blood that tell us a lot about the shark's energy state and how they're storing their energy. They can give us a little bit of insight into their current health. We also have a number of researchers looking at bacteria and the microfaunal colony around sharks. So that's the bacteria that lives on their skin and their mouth and their gills and how that might change with different factors. The research we do is centered broadly on understanding how global environmental change impacts the behavior, ecology and health of sharks and in turn how this might then impact the environment. This includes studies that track sharks to understand their movement and migration patterns why they're going to certain places, and if they're spending disproportionately more time in some places, that might be used for things like feeding or reproduction. And in these places, are they protected from exploitation, for example, from fisheries, or are they vulnerable? And if so, how would you adjust management practices if needed to best conserve them? We also have projects trying to better understand the ecological role of sharks. Basically, what happens to an ecosystem after sharks are removed through overfishing, or what happens if shark populations recover from effective conservation management. 